Evolution.org Radio. What's up, guys? This is episode 385 QA CC here. And the Ripster. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing out there? All right, it's five topics ahead, four steroid questions, and then the fifth one is going to be story time. Let's get into the first one, Rick. First one is Can I get my wife pregnant while on steroids? So I'll bring you in on this because I don't have kids that I know of. I probably have several out there somewhere. Might have to go on Maury to find out about, uh, get the DNA results for those. But you have at least three, right? You probably have like 10, but you have three that you know of. So tell us a little bit about that. Have you gotten them while you were on? And um, help the guys out on this one. Actually, on me, steroids work is incredible birth control. It's just when I get off of them, um, yeah, 20 years off, I've been, I've made mistakes, boo-boos here and there, gauging the amount of time it would take my body to recover and bounce back. And boom, we got baby. That, so that's kind of, uh, it's kind of how it goes, man. While you're on them, for most of you guys out there, unless you're taking some PCT meds, unless you're taking HC Generate, and to generate hcgenerate.com, my product, right? Unless you're taking my product or maybe some Clomid or you shot HCG, something along those lines, unless you do something like that, chances are that for the most part, you're going to be shooting blanks when you're on steroids. You won't, you won't be able to get a chick pregnant. Now, well, don't take that to the bank, right? <laughs> well, what's the best way to say that, Steve? Don't, don't, don't. You know, don't take that to the bank. Don't take that to the. Don't take it where, right? Because uh, you no can't. Pun bank... intend, no pun intended. Don't take it to the sperm bank. No mm, pun intended. There you go. Don't take it. Don't take that to the. I got another word. Fuck the sperm bank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't, don't take it to her on my word, because uh, as we've discussed here many a times, genetics play a big role. Things change. I'm trying to remember who the guy was that said it, but I know one of these pros said it, said that when he was on the lower ranges of steroid dosing, he was, he was uh, sterile, no kids. And then when he, when he brought it beyond, uh, you know, the, the thousands of MIGs, then he got to a point where he was making sperm again. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta be real careful. You gotta play this, play this by, by ear and, and, you got to be careful with it and just got to be careful, man. Put her on birth control too, just to double up. Fuck that. Have her take some hormones <laughs> and double up. But I, I wouldn't rely on it as a soul means. I, I, I have, right, guys? But, but don't, don't do it. You know what I mean? I have, but don't do it. How about that? How about, what do you, what do you think, Steve? Have you ever used a, uh, steroids is a form of uh, birth control? No, nah, bro. We've discussed this before, brother. Uh, listen, back when I was in college, uh, I had a discussion with a buddy of mine. He's like, he's like, even if you're wearing a condom, you don't ever nut inside a woman. You always pull out. So if you pull out, you can't get her pregnant. Okay? It's impossible. Even if you're not wearing a condom. You've got to actually, unless you nutted before, and then, like an hour later, you had sex. Okay, there's a small chance that could happen. But you know, okay, so, so so you pull out even with a condom, dude. Why not? You never know. The condom could break or something. So okay, you okay. Pull out. Point taken. What if she's on birth control? Do you pull out still? Even with? Or, or do you still wear a condom even if she's on birth? No, control? no. You pull out, brother. You, you, you can't trust the birth control. Birth control is ninety nine percent. So that's not one percent. So here's here's. But let's get back. Wait to a the minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. So if 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 let's say you live with a girl, you've lived with women before. And I'm sure you've had women you live with be on birth control. You tell me that when she's on birth control, you still pull out? Yes. Do, do you use a condom or no condom? Whether I'm using a condom or not does not matter. No. You always pull out. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, but if she's on birth control, do you still additionally use the condom on top of that just in case? Is that why you don't have kids? Or do you still, or do you not use a condom when if she's on birth control, you live with a girl? Well, what's, what's, your, what's your MO on that? I mean, it's, listen, at the end of the day, like if you're a young guy and when I was younger, you want to use that, like you said, at least two forms. That's what any doctor will tell you. Any doctor who deals with fertility will tell you, you should always use two forms. She can use a form, you use a form. 
that's, you know, that's the safest way to do it. So, but once you get older, you can start using just one form, you know, but at the end of the day, look, if, if you pull out, you pull out, bro. You're not going to, the, the sperm has to fertilize the egg. So as long as you're pulled out, you, you don't have to worry about that. So, but that's the thing. Like, here's the thing, like in your situation, you weren't trying to have kids. And in most situations, two out of three kids are born to people who weren't intentionally trying to have kids. The people that try to have kids so bad and the wife's like crying, oh, I want a baby, I want a baby. They can never have a kid, it seems. But the people who aren't trying to have kids, like you see, you watch, you know, uh, Gary Springer or Maury or something. It's always like some teenagers on there who are having, who had a kid by mistake. And it's just like, and then they'll have, they'll bring on the couple in their forties who can't have a kid and they're crying how bad they want a baby. But then these kids, you know, they go and have a baby that they don't even want. So it's just funny how, how life works on, on that. So it's, it's all psychological, man. But let's get to the science. Let's get into the blood work that I've seen. The, what you need to do is go get your fertility test. And I'll include a link in, in my uh, – I'll include a link. You go get your fertility test. You go get blood work. It will give you an idea of how healthy it is. Your reproductive system is screwed because of steroids or steroid abuse over the years, your chances of having kids are reduced. Remember, it takes one sperm. But the thing is, the more you use steroids, the less and less sperm and less and less reproductive health you're going to have as you get older. So what you want to do, if you're going on TRT for life, you know, you go on TRT for like a year or two years, you can get your sperm test so you may not have any. It might be at zero because you've been shut down for so long. So what you have to do is you have to come off all the hormones and then run a really strong PCT, cross your fingers and hope things come back. And if things can come back, then you'll start shooting bullets again. But for a lot of you listening, you know, if you're using steroids, it's your chances are less and less. And we know from the studies that it's not just less sperm, Rick, it's the motility of the sperm. The sperm becomes much less strong. So the chances of that sperm making it and fertilizing that egg is less and less and less. But we've seen plenty of guys, even on TRT, even on a really harsh steroid cycle, still get their you know, girls pregnant. And that's just because it only takes one. But the odds are reduced. So my advice is you really have to go and get yourself tested so you know where you're at. And then you can kind of go from there. That's That would be my advice. Okay, Steve. So let me get it straight. So she's on birth control. You're wearing a condom. You still pull out? Yeah, Absolutely. That that would that there's no reason not to. Why like I don't understand. I don't understand like why would you risk it? You know, I'm just, I'm just I'm you know. This this show's all about uh, sharing experience. I'm just wondering yeah. you know, the way you explain it. So that's three methods of birth control. Then that's good. That's three because you have. Yeah. You have, she's taking no yeah. more birth control. Well, you asked You're me. You're always asking me. Well, the funny of, and and you and you and you're doing the pull-out methods. Actually, three methods of birth control. I mean, well, it works. Well, Look, I mean, obviously, it obviously works. Well, like we always discuss off-air. Rick likes to talk to me about financial stuff, and I tell Rick all the time. I was like, Rick, I was asking, what can I invest in? I want to save from. I'm like, dude, stop having kids. That's the best investment you can make, bro. <laughs> Just stop having kids, because kids are expensive. Just like my buddy, he likes to gamble. He has to go to Vegas. He'll take a briefcase of ten thousand dollars cash with him to vegas and he'll come back with nothing and he's the same way oh what can i invest in i want to invest i want to save our time i'm like dude stop gambling and he looks at me like i'm crazy it's like dude use common sense if you don't want to have a kid then fucking pull out or abstinence you know like i'm hoping you guys who have kids teach your kids not to have sex when they're in high school what do you got? What do you need to have sex for when you're 17 years old working at Popeye's making five, six dollars an hour? What's the minimum wage now, Rick? What, seven and a half dollars an hour? 
How you gonna how you gonna raise a baby on seven and a half dollars an hour? So I mean, you know, come on, don't depend on steroids as birth control. That's just that's crazy. You know, you have to be smart about this, and you have to you know uh, make sure that you're not handcuffing yourself by uh, by having kids. And on the flip side, if you want to have kids, you have to give yourself the best chance to have kids. And you're not going to be able to give your best, the best chance by taking anabolic steroids. So really, it's a good, it's a very important discussion that we're having here, guys. There's no other podcast to talk about this stuff. But you guys are in your 20s. When you get in your 30s and you, you know, get engaged, you get married, and you can't shoot bullets, all right, and, or you're shooting bullets, but they're not modal, they're very weak bullets, your wife is probably going to divorce your ass because she wants a kid. That's what happens all the time. And you may try to have a kid. She may get pregnant and then maybe a chemical pregnancy or it might be a miscarriage or something. That's going to make her want to have a kid even more. And because your sperm is so weak, your odds get reduced and reduced. So you guys in your 20s, you better, you better realize that the more you abuse anabolic steroids in your 20s, the less chance you are of having bullets in your 30s. And trust me, women want kids who don't have kids. They want kids. That's like the one thing that they want. And if you can't provide it for them, they're going to go somewhere else. Any final thoughts before we move on, Rick? What the fuck did you tell me not to have kids and financial advice and all this stuff? You're, you're funny. You're a funny, funny guy. I got a, I got a rag on you, bro. <laughs> what the fuck did this happen? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, look, man. Um, so, okay. So let me get this straight. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Okay. So she's a birth control. You're steroids. <laughs> you're, you're wearing a condom. <laughs> Do you still pull out? Dude, yes, that's a rule. That was advice given to me in college, and I've stuck to it, and it's it's worked out. It's worked out for me. Front that I know of, at least, it's worked out for me. You, oh jeez, all right, all right. I'm just. I think you're. I think I think you're very fertile. I think you're. All right, so let me ask you a question. Okay, so she's on birth control. You're on, on the sauce. You're wearing a condom. It's a second nut. Do you pull out or do you stay in? <laughs> Please, come on. We're not at the club here. Please, let's get serious. <laughs> let's get serious. <laughs> All right, I'm just uh, You know, I... I you're going gonna, you're gonna to hit me. I, you know you're going to hit me up like, I, in the next I, few I, months? I, I and you'd be like, oh, I got a fourth. Kid I coming. knew there was I knew there was something off about you. I didn't know what quite what was what. Um, buddy, I'm listen, man. I'm I'm good with my kids, man. Take care of my kids, love my kids, they love me. And not just around dropping kids the way you make it sounds a little bit offensive. I actually had a, a long relationship with these women. We tried to make a, a something together and we couldn't. And they wanted kids. I, I deal with South American beautiful Colombian women and they're still kind of old school in some ways and, and after a certain age they wanna they want to have those those chitlins. So um you know man, that's it man I mean that's that's just it's just kind of how it goes. No bro. don't don't be offensive buddy let me tell you something on the holidays as much as people out there they don't want kids they regret having kids on the holidays having you know, having I, presents I, under the Christmas tree is nothing that better. Out there. I, threw that, I knew, I knew as soon as I threw that, I'm offended out there. I break you down a little bit. Go ahead. There's, there's nothing better than on on Christmas morning seeing the look on your kid's face when they open uh, their uh, the present and they see uh, you know, the way the way it is. The way it is with your kids is like if you don't have them, then you don't care. You're kind of like you're happy you don't have them. That's all right. But once you have them, do anything for them and just the enjoyment you get out of like being there for the different phases in their life is, is incredible. It's, this is the best. And yeah, there's definitely a monetary investment that goes that goes along with it. But man, is it rewarding? It could really could be your best investment of time and, and money that you can have is, is, you know, bringing somebody along that's it's got your last name and and really 
really be good at it, you know, like be, be good dealing with them and bringing them up and teaching them about the world, like all that shit is, is ill. So if you, if you don't have them, you don't care. You're like, fuck that. But once you got them, it's like, yo, you do anything, you do anything for them. You give your life for them. Uh, you know, you, it's just, it's just how it is, man. That's that's sweet. Or do you uh, wait? wait uh, do you do you have a vas- why don't you just get a vasectomy if you don't want to ever have kids or do you want to have kids one day? Do you think? Um, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I, I honestly like. Um, I, I I, you know, I, it's not something right now. I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm interested in, bro. Like, uh, it's hard for. People I'm not trying to interest you in a child. I'm just I'm just saying in general, it's something you just never. Or have you maybe never? Have you always been in the relationship where you know that you you won't be able to stay with her too many years, and then that's funny. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but you know, um, let me tell you something, buddy. Like, it's like having a pool. Like, if you've ever owned a pool, you know how much of a hassle it is and responsibility. And not everybody uh, wants that responsibility, brother. Like the difference is like you can not want the responsibility or you can be like some people and have kids and not want the responsibility and just neglect your children. So it works both ways, you know? You see what I'm saying? I, the way I remember it, when, when, when I was going to have my first my first kid, I was around 22. I, when I found out I was going to, I was going to be having them. And um, it just made me like, it went from doing well in life and, and having time, money and energy and, and having, making my way into this, this American dream. It was like a, maybe could, I, will I be able to make it? I, I didn't quite know, you know what I mean? Um, before, before he was on the way. And then when I found out he was on the way, it was just like, all right, it's not a matter of like if, it's a matter of like how, you know what I mean? Not even when, when I don't, I don't care. I know it'll happen. It's a matter of basically a, a absolute how it's going to happen now. And when, you know, he was on the way, he hella, hella pumped me up. I'd say, so when I found out my first one was on the way, I automatically shaved the a good hour, hour and a half off of my sleep every day and just did additional things and got my, and really motivated. Cause I, I was, I was responsible now for, for, for something more than myself. So I felt like now I had to make it in life. I had to do something. I couldn't just be in the rat race. I couldn't just be miserable going on the same bullshit ass job every day. I knew I needed to, to do something that was meaningful to me in the world and, and be a good example to him. And that's it, man. So it helps. I think at least. All right. <laughs> yep. Let's hit the let's hit the next question, buddy. Um, that was a good discussion. We'll have to hit that one again in the future. Mm-hmm. So the second one is going to be about the way to run trend without testosterone. So this is something that a lot of guys have been doing. Uh, lately, I actually learned about this many years ago. Um, I had run trend with tests and I noticed a lot of side effects. So um, I was recommended to not run testosterone with Trembolone. So I started running trend solo just by itself between 250, 400 milligrams a week. And I noticed much less side effects because you don't have to worry about that testosterone and aromatizing into estrogen and causing more androgenic effects. So Right off the bat, you can run trend by itself, nothing else. 200, 250 milligrams a week, you can get really good results just on that. The other option, too, is you can run trend with a mild steroid like Anavar or t at a dose, say, with the t 30, 40 milligrams a day or the Anavar 40 milligrams a day. And that would give you that extra kind of anabolic kick to the cycle. You want to get an androgenic kick from those mild compounds. The trends provide the androgen and those compounds are causing the mild anabolic. So you want to get the side effects, but you would get some nice benefits. So 
those would be the two ways I'd recommend running Trembolone without testosterone. So, and you know, a lot of guys out there who are on TRT are like, Oh, you know, you should always run tests as a base. You know, I have to, I, I run TRT every week. You can actually stop your TRT dose and just do the Trembolone. The Trembolone is, is more than, um, making up for that testosterone that you would be using on TRT. And then when you come off the trend, you can go back to your normal TRT dose. You can do it that way. So there really is no reason to shy away from running trend without testosterone. It's, it's definitely something that, you know, gets, gets run. They, they, people run that all the time and it's, it's one of the best ways to run it. Any thoughts on this, Rick? If you're going to run trend without testosterone, just run it for a short while your body still makes some testosterone, right? Some people just make natural gains. That's it, right? Which is what your body makes. So a little bit of trembolone, not running it too long to suppress the testosterone you do make. You're good to use it, use it by itself. Now, is it a like, okay, can't use test, but I can use something else. You run some of that trend in Anavar. That's pretty decent. That could that could really, if, if you got to do something, do that. Trend in EQ. That's also a good one. Trying to master on. Could fucks with that too, depending on what your goals are. But use it, use it without testosterone and use it with something else like that. Also a good option. I like that. Next topic we're going to talk about is uh, will steroids cure depression? So we see a lot of guys, they're depressed and they want to run anabolic steroids because they think that that's going to cure their depression. One of the things I've noticed though, a lot of reasons guys are depressed. It's not because their testosterone levels are low or, you know, they don't have hormones and stuff like that. A lot of times they're depressed for other reasons and just running these hormones will kind of cover up existing issues. And then when they come off those hormones, their depression gets even worse so it really isn't logical to use anabolic steroids to cure depression. One of the things, um, you know, it's normal to have, you know, a bad day to feel up and down. And I think people don't realize that. I think people think that they always have to be high. I think a lot of that has to do with the way they were raised. Like if they were upset or about something, the parents would be like, okay, you know, let's, let me get you something to make you happy. Let me just, make the kid happy. There wasn't that pain factor of, of, you know, raising the kids. It's um, where the kids had to deal with stuff. So it's kind of like the parents were just helicopter parents and always cleaning up for their kids and not allowing their kids to kind of take off from the nest. It's like the little bird in the nest. And then the bird hatches and the parent, you know, parent bird comes and feeds it and takes care of it and teaches it how to fly and teaches it all the stuff. Well, eventually that bird has to leave the nest. So I think that has a lot to do with it. So as adults, once you become an adult, you don't learn to deal with stuff properly. And for me, um, I think, I think I went through that a lot myself. But now as an adult, what I, the way I handle it is I just, whatever is upsetting me, whatever is depressing me, I try to resolve it. You know, I try to resolve it right away instead of letting it linger. Cause you start letting things linger. It's like having a cavity, that cavity, you let it linger. Then it's going to turn into a root canal Then you're going to need a crown. So instead of paying $150 for your cavity to be filled, now you got to pay $2,000 for a root canal and a crown. It makes absolutely no sense. So try, try to get those things like nailed right off the bat. And at the end of the day, you know, listen, some of you guys out there, you live in places where if I lived where you live, I would be depressed. You know, like, like Rick, you move from Las Vegas to fucking Long Island. Like who does that? I would be depressed if I went from living in Las Vegas to Long Island, I would be depressed too. So look at where you're living. I mean, maybe you just got to move to another place, move to a place with, with people like with, you know, move to a place. Where I, tell, I tell you what, I wouldn't trade 
summer in New York. I know. I Dude, I'll just bust on your that. balls. I'm I would have traded. I tell I tell you, you go for it. I, I tell I tell I tell you what, my friend. Now I got to say something because I'm sure we got a lot of listeners in the East Coast and Northeast. When the middle, like late June, early July, like like oh man, Independence Day in New York, the weather is just perfect. When I was when I've been in Nevada and Las Vegas for those dates. You can't even you you don't even want to be outside. You don't want to be in, I mean you just you don't want to be anywhere near outside of that that I, I, it's just too hot. It's just out of this world. But that same date and why oh man. And why the, the the summer in New York is some of the best times you can have in in, in all of the continental United States. So getting into the whole depression thing uh tell us about steroids and depression. A lot of people are depressed and a lot of people use steroids and a lot of times those two uh, pies meet come together in, in, in one. So you get someone that it's already have been already has some depression issues for whatever other reason he would have before steroids came into the picture and then using steroids can actually amplify some of these problems being on that high, that a good, strong androgen high, and then you you come off, come down, get depressed, start you look different right away. As soon as your androgen levels drop, your muscles look different right away. You look different in the mirror, you feel different. The weights behave differently in your hands. They don't they don't just move around almost on their own anymore. I mean, you've got to fucking hit them. Your body aches more. All these things, it's just a, a high and a low. It's just the kind of thing that if somebody's already depressive to begin with, could could fuck with them. I mean, so. the, look, the cut to the chase, there's nothing out there, you know, you know, studies or anecdotal evidence that show that just hopping on steroids is going to cure your depression. If you have depression already before steroids, there's a good chance that steroids will make them worse, not better. So do not use anabolic steroids to cure your depression. You might feel what, what, what I've seen it, what I've seen, what I've seen that claim legitimately made is testosterone replacement therapy clinics. They'll list depression as one of the side effects of low testosterone. So I think in a in a low testosterone situation where you you're feeling depressed because you're suffering from low T and you add some T that some testosterone that'll bring you up to normal levels. Um, then in that case, it could have maybe cured your depression, but not not the way, not if you're just if your hormone levels are normal to begin with, right? That, that's what we're talking about. I think at the end of the day, you know, it's it's a reach to think that just you know taking testosterone is gonna cure your depression. It's a it's a huge reach. A lot of guys are under the impression that, you know, at the end of the day, there's root, a root issue going on. You can't just say, yeah, I'm just going to run testosterone and cure my depression. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, I mean, there's a root cause that causes it. So, but yes, if you have low testosterone, but why do you have low testosterone? That's, that's what I want to know first. Before we just cover it up, we need to find out why you have low testosterone. That would be number one. So, you have to find out what the hell is going on and why you have it in the, in the first place. That would be very, very helpful because whatever got you into the mess, it would be a good idea to get you out by fixing that one issue instead of just co- trying to cover it up. So I think, I think people just overrate what TRT does. You know, they think that it, it's like some magic and it, it really isn't. And these, uh, these clinics, they make it out to be that way because they want your money. They want to get you on something for the rest of your life. So they make these promises. But I know, Rick, I know so many guys on TRT, bro. They, they didn't change their lives going on TRT, okay? I mean, it's, it's like that commercial, you know, uh, hair club for men or whatever. Oh, I, I got, went to hair club for men and now I'm so confident. Now I'm acing my opponent on the tennis court. Now I'm getting women. 
it's 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 a little out of hand like that's marketing you know it's not a serious it's not a serious you know way to solve depression you know so definitely not depression i mean it does help your your libido and the way you look and performance in the gym all these other things but yeah why is your libido down anyway that's what i want to know again we go back to the same point why is your libido down like we need to fix why it's down in the first place there's so much problems now with libido and erectile dysfunction and stuff among people in their 20s I mean, that was not the case 20 years ago. When I was in college, I never needed a dick drug. And now you have 20-year-olds who need dick drugs. There's something else going on that has to be solved. That's my point. I hear what you're saying, man. But testosterone replacement therapy addresses a very specific, addresses a set of symptoms based on a very specific issue specific issue is your body is low in testosterone and replacement therapy like steve pointed out you're not dealing with why it's low you're just gonna replace it and probably just say fuck it and make the problem worse altogether make the actual uh root cause of why it's low maybe even worse altogether right now completely replacing it with synthetic testosterone but at least the symptoms that come with it which for many guys, depending on your age and depending on what your predisposition is already, could be you know, the depression, loss in libido, loss in muscle mass, loss in drive, gain in body fat. You know, the, the, all these uh, all these different uh, things that come with just having low low testosterone. All right, so next one is family emergency, have to travel middle cycle. So this one was for you, Rick, because you travel a lot in and out of the country and stuff. So what do you do if you get the call and your house, you know, overseas got hit by an earthquake and it's damaged and you got to get on a plane, you got to go there to check, you know, to file the insurance claim or whatever, and you're in the middle of a cycle, what would you do? If I was flying overseas, um, I'm on injectables a lot. Not a big oral guy, so not too worried about taking orals with me everywhere. The injectables, you can sometimes go further or longer than you have to until your next injection and be fine. And if I'm going overseas, there'll be plenty of steroids there. I'll be swimming in juice. So not a, a never mind. I guess the question would be, look, if I was doing it locally, just take some of my shit with me and travel local. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot to worry about. Um, just don't, don't probably not in the carry on. Uh, maybe even mail it to yourself. I don't know. You know what I mean? You, you figure it out. Local is pretty easy. If you're going from NY to California NY to Nevada, whatever. If you're going out of the country, most places you go to, you'll be able to get some, some sauce, some juice when you get there. Most places. It's actually, U.S. is one of the places where enforcement is the toughest when it comes to steroids. Most other places you go to, you'll be pretty be pretty easy to get steroids. So, um, not not a lot to worry about, man. I mean, I don't I don't know. Well, what would you do, Steve? And let's say you had to uh, you had to travel and you had to go see your family. Let's say you're going to U.K. or Australia. What, what would what would you do? You would. Uh, I wouldn't try to bring juice into either of those countries from the from from the U.S. Um, I would basically uh, I would just cut my cycle short, go straight into post PCT, PCT the days that I can. Maybe I'll bring some some clomid with me uh, on the plane. Maybe why not? And um, and I'll uh, and I'll take my AC generate. But I mean, what would you do? I mean, this is an isolated situation. So at the end of the day, I have no issue just stopping the cycle. You know, just stop the cycle, go handle your business. And when you get back, you can either continue the cycle or you can inject before you leave and then inject when you get back. So that's that's what well, I would do. Would you go cold? To, okay, yeah, that, that's true. If you're only going to be away a week, two weeks, you could inject the day before you leave. That That's very that, that's very reasonable. Yeah, that, that would be the best thing. These long esters, people don't understand. They're in your body four or five weeks. They don't just They don't just come out of your body the next day. So 
it'll be in your body for five years. It has plenty of time. So that's what I would do, you know? And uh, the other thing too is when you're, you know, you know, if you have to fly or get out, you are you going to be working out where you're going? That's another important thing. Cause if you're not working out, then, you know, you're kind of hurting your cycle and the, the stress of traveling that can hurt your cycle too. So try to keep that as an isolated event and try to avoid stuff like that. Because when you're on cycle, you want to just focus on your cycle. You want to be focused, honed in, no distractions, no coming home. Oh, the dryer is broken or coming home and you know, um, oh, my car won't start dealing with these problems, which prevents you from focusing in on going to the gym. Because if that's what you're going to have to deal with the whole cycle, then your games are not going to be as good as someone who can just focus in, you know, a trust fund baby who just can focus in on working out and sticking their ass with steroids for 12 weeks. They're going to have better results than someone who has to deal with you know, their wife nagging them about the dryer breaking or the car breaking or this or this or that. It's, you see what I'm saying? Or the lawn, uh, you know, the, the HOA sent us a letter about the lawn. I mean, these are stuff that we have to do. I've dealt with this stuff myself. So you don't want these, these headaches in your life. You don't want these distractions. We go back to the first topic about kids. You don't want your daughter coming home and saying, oh yeah, I'm pregnant. The, the guy, you know, that guy uh, with the with the neck tattoo that, that you said I couldn't date? Yeah, yeah, he got me pregnant. So, yeah, that's another example. It goes in with our first thing. But these distractions, you've got to be able to focus in when it comes to training. Any professional athlete, these professional athletes who excel at their trade, any job, a CEO who's really, really good, they focus in on what they're doing. And they get the results. That's that's the secret. That's the secret to this. So just you got to try to avoid that as much as you can. If you're a person who travels a lot or you could get called for work to travel, then maybe using anabolic steroid isn't the best decision for you. You know, so any other final thoughts on that, Rick, before we move on? Covered it, I think. Yeah. So the final topic is about uh, story time. So I, I saw this interesting show about dimensions, about how you can get sucked into a different dimension. So basically the story that I saw, it basically this parents were sleeping and they had a little daughter in the other room and they woke up, the daughter screaming, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy. So they get up, the dad's like, oh, I got to get up. I got to go check on the kid. So he gets up and he goes to the, her room and he's like, what's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? What's wrong with you? And she's like, daddy, daddy, help me. And he's looking for her in the bedroom and she's nowhere to be found in the bedroom. So he's looking under the bed. He's looking behind the bed, look behind the cabinet. She, she can hear her voice, but he can't see her anywhere. So then he calls the wife. And he's like, we can't, you know, I don't know where she is. I, we can hear her voice. And she's like, mommy, mommy. So then the guy's like, you know, what the hell is going on here? So the dog comes in the room and the dog runs after the girl to try to find where the girl is. And he disappears. So then the parents are like, holy shit. But they can hear the dog barking in the background. So they can hear the girl saying mommy mommy daddy daddy and they hear the dog woof 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 in the background it's like coming from far away but they're not in the room it's kind of like coming from the room but they're not in the room it's really weird so then the guy calls up his buddy he's a physicist and the physicist comes over to the house he's like dude please come over right away you know something really weird is going on here so the guy gets here and they're like okay the guy is like okay this is really i've read about this it's like, let's move the bed. So then they move the bed. And then behind the bed, the physicist sticks his hand through the wall. And his hand goes through the wall. And he's like, this is like, she's stuck in a different dimension, but she can't get her, find her way back. Because the, the dimension she went to, there's no way to, 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 to walk back. It's basically just you're in this weird place where if you walk in a direction, you don't know what direction you're going. 
So then, you know, they're um, they're strategizing on what to do. So then the dad, to cut the, the story short, the dad sticks his head through the wall and he sees the other dimension and he falls into the wall and now he's in the other dimension. So then the physicist on the other side of the wall is like, don't move from the spot you're at, do not move. If you move, we'll lose you too. So the physicist tells him, call the dog. Tell the daughter to grab the dog's collar and call the dog. This way the dog can come to you. So then, you know, he, he's like, he's like, come here, boy. Come here. He's like, tells his daughter, you know, grab on the dog's collar. I'm going to call the dog. Come on, boy. He's like, come here, Max. Come here, Max. So Max is like, roof, roof, roof. He's like, come here, Max. Follow my voice. Come here, Max. So the dog is pulling the girl to the guy. And then he gets to the guy and the guy grabs him. And he's like, I got them. And then the physicist through the wall pulls the guy from the wall and they pull back and the physicist is like oh my god he's like i had you the whole time i was grabbing half of you the whole time through the wall and he's like look now look at it and they hit the wall and it's like boom 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 the wall the the dimension closed so the physicist is like look we got you just in time because once that dimension would have closed we would have never been able to find you again so this is a true story then they actually got these team of scientists to come to the house and inspect it and see what's going on and never figured out what, what caused that. But it's basically an, like an interdimensional uh, thing where you get sucked into another dimension. Um, and if you don't come back in time, you get, you're stuck in the other dimension forever. So I, don't know, I thought it was an interesting story. Uh, those of you who are into like science and physicists and stuff like that, um, this, this type of thing, um, this, this stuff happens. And there's been lots of documented reports of people disappearing in different dimensions. That's what the Bermuda Triangle is all about. You've had ships and planes and boats get lost in the Bermuda Triangle. They never found them. And a lot of that could be due to different dimensions. So I know, Rick, you're really big into this type of stuff. What, what do you think about the story? It's scary, huh? Um. I don't think the supernatural world actually exists. To be honest, you're a skeptic. Here. You're a skeptic. So you, let me ask you a question: How come, like on Christmas, you write down the list of what you want for Santa Claus, and then the next morning you wake up, you look under the tree, and the, what you wanted, and Santa Claus came and bring you your gifts? Like, how does Santa Claus deliver all those gifts to kids around all around the world if, if there's no such thing? Explain that one to me. <laughs> how come and how come you leave the milk and cookies the night before next to the chimney and the next morning the milk and cookies are gone the night before i'm at the club okay <laughs> listen uh i explain uh, that to me if you don't believe in it I am, how does, is that a santa claus in, in, in a way in a way I'm a, I'm a spiritual person i believe in god but i also don't but but i don't believe in like anything to do with like witches and magics or hex or voodoo or other dimensions. Um, I don't know, maybe something, but, but not like people walking around it, but like a weird dimension where time, space and matter behave differently or something like that. Maybe, but not like, like Stargate or something crazy like that, where there's other people walking around and not, I don't I don't know, ghost, not a believer in it either, bro. None of this stuff. Maybe uh, there might be aliens because aliens, see, aliens in other dimensions, that's something that physics and stuff can explain. But anything beyond that, like, you know, hula hoop, voodoo magic, I just don't, don't, not a believer in any of that stuff. Santeria, all of that. That's it's all, it's all hogwash. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think, Steve? You, you believe in Santeria? I don't know much about that. I don't know much about that. Um, it's it's like a voodoo type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, but there might be another dimension. I don't, I don't know, but that we've crossed it, that we've been been there. I don't, I don't think so. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, Woody, Woody. Uh, no, dude. There's been lots of documented cases of this type of thing happening. There's been. Uh, I can. I, I know another story about a farmer. He was in his field doing his crops and he just disappeared and the family went to the spot. They heard his voice, but they, he was gone. Like, but they heard yeah. his voice coming from that spot. Really? Yeah. There's been many stories of that. They, that stuff did, he, did he come back or he just keep, keep continue to be gone? He was gone forever. 
and and they heard his voice. Could they like talk to him, or they just heard him say something? Uh, were they having conversations with him? No, they could talk to him. The same thing as that story. And he was like, "I don't know where fuck I'm at. I can't. I can't. I can't get back." Right? Yeah. 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 It's That's really crazy. bizarre. Yeah, That's man. Insane. Yeah, like the Bermuda Triangle. You know about the Bermuda Triangle. I don't believe. Of... I don't believe that the, there's anything crazy like that in the Bermuda Triangle either. What happens in the Bermuda Triangle is the stays in the Bermuda Triangle, bro. Well, I mean, the boats and the ships and the planes they fly through the Bermuda Triangle and they lose the the magnetic force. All their equipment starts failing, huh. and weird shit happens. Like shit just disappears. There's been incidences where a boat has been towing another boat through the Bermuda Triangle and then the boat behind, the, you know, the, the second boat disappeared. Like, literally, they're looking out in the ocean and the second boat is gone. You think, you think aliens are real? Uh, I think that there's a 100% chance that there's other life out there. I mean, they found uh, the Mars rock. There was a bacteria on the Mars rock, so... The, the meteor actually from Mars but, that so, okay so you do believe in life on other planets do you believe that there's they, no there's no I, there's no debate on that okay the question are they, is are they here are they are they here talking have they them? come here have they come here that's the question do what do you believe um I think I mean there was just like a UFO sighting uh, the government confirmed it that the they have it on tape and everything what do you believe I think that it's possible I think it's possible that if they, you know, were more uh, intelligent enough where they could, they could, you know, come here. I don't think, you know, I doubt, would... I doubt they're in contact, but I, I wish, I, I hope they're around. I hope it exists because, you know, the, the biggest, the biggest, the real biggest danger to, to us really could be um, a big rock falling out, out here, coming here from, uh, from out of space and smacking us and it'll kill life on this planet. But if they're already, we've already got buddies that got spaceships that can go in and blow up one of these rocks or, or put in another path before it gets here. We're in the clear. I mean, we're good. I mean, unless, unless we really fuck things up and we can't get them back, we can't. We, look, if we're going to terraform Mars, we should be able to fix Earth. I mean, if, we, if we're going to have the technology to terraform another planet, we should have the technology to fix the one we already got to. So hopefully... Um, Within our lifetime, yours and mine, we'll see the planet go get get a little bit worse before it gets better, and then we'll see new technologies clean up a lot of the things that we've already uh, contaminated. But if you had the, the option to go live on Mars, would you do it? Oh, I think you and I would be too old to to get a chance to go up there. By the time by the time Mars opens up, really opens up for people to go go up there. It could be about ten years, I think, and you know, we'll be. I'll be fifty, so. But I would. I would. Uh, it depends what stage of my life. If I was a young man, well, what happened? Uh, let's say the Martians ended up coming here, and you met a hot Martian chick. Would you move? And she said, "You know, um, I can marry you. You can get citizenship on Mars. Would you go back with her?" You know, um, you know, through evolution, it looks like we we interbred with all types of hominids, like just fuck it if it had if it looked like if it looked like like me a little bit we're, we're fucking uh, apparently is what is how we actually our genetics could you imagine martian women good. were like 10 times more attractive than earth women could you imagine but they were green <laughs> like she was just hot like like a, like a perfect 10 in every aspect of the situation but she was just as green as those fucking palm trees behind you right now. Or maybe instead of being green, she they smell weird. They smell like fish or something. If she was like hot as hell, like a like ten I've times hotter. I've, 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 I've met Earth women like that now. <laughs> <laughs> I read a couple in my years. I've read a couple across a, a couple across a couple of Earth women like that. So I mean, what are you talking about? What are you saying here? Fit, you should watch the. You know what show you would probably hate, but you. But see watch that, it. that that would, that would be crazy. So so, a hot hot female, just a weird color. You know I can relate because I, I watch like 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 Marvel. I watch Marvel, Star Wars stuff, and you they always have these like hot actresses, but they'll have like 
a piece of machinery on their head or you're such a geek <laughs> you're into that i didn't know you're into that you like lord of the rings and all that shit too um whenever i watch anything that's that's fiction because i rarely indulge in fiction yeah, i want so you are a geek yeah. i want it to be out there fiction like i'm not gonna watch a, a, a cop drama it's like fuck that i got better things to do with my time but i watch yeah, but, but i watch style. like I, I watch like 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 uh like hawk and winter soldier i watch that kind of cop drama that's fucking cool because it's like all the way out there fiction but whenever i i, I watch uh the two men just documentary it up man i like documentaries historical documentaries too are hot but nah man um you know where I like to, uh, you know where you wouldn't like it because you don't like the cold too much. You wouldn't like Pluto. Like if you ever met a Plutonian woman, I don't think you would like living on Pluto. It's what? very cold on Pluto. It's like it's like negative five hundred degrees. Pluto. Don't you need to be a flea to live on Pluto? A to what? Don't you need, don't you have to be a flea to live on Pluto? A flea? Yeah, to live on Pluto. Well, I don't get that joke. You don't get that joke? Nah, you didn't grow up watching Disney? Nah, nah, nah. I have to look into <sighs> that. I just, it's funny, though. I just looked Goofy's, it up. Goofy's, Goofy's dog is, is named Pluto. Pluto. Pluto, gotcha, gotcha. I, I just looked up the temperature on Pluto. It says 200. Uh, it says 400 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. So I was close. I said 500 degrees. That's good. I know my science. Yeah. That's pretty cold, so, though. You so, probably freeze pretty quick. On so l- 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 we've probably discussed this in other podcasts, but let's, let's rehash. Have you ever, have you ever had any supernatural experiences in your lifetime? Oh, dude, are you kidding me? I've, I've told this, the stories on this. Podcast. Yeah, you have, right? A bunch. Yeah. I, I, I got I to gotta tell you, man, I, I've, I haven't had any. I'm kind of glad I haven't had any. It just frees me from the bullshit. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, I got all these people around me that claim that they've seen everything from ghosts to aliens to witches to monsters. I ain't never seen shit, bro. Ever. Nothing. Yeah. Well, it's good. Nothing, nothing that couldn't be explained. Because you don't believe in it. So even that if you saw works? it, you want to believe what you saw. Is that how it works? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Like, I could have had the the... The spooky cross right in front of me, maybe try to scare me, but since I don't believe in it, I wasn't scared. Is that that's what you're saying? Maybe I could have had like a there's there's been videos of people where Mm -hmm. there's been a ghost on video and like Mm -hmm. five people were there and only one person noticed and the four others had no clue. And then they watched the video again, they're like, Holy shit, we didn't even see that. So I mean, if you're not some some people just can't see it, some people are not observant, you know. But I have a ghost in my place, and um, in your house now. Yeah, my girlfriend hears the ghost, and I see the ghost. So everyone has different. Uh, Get the fuck out of here! You're seeing ghosts. I'm like Sam Darnold. I see ghosts. So like, so like on a, on a weekly basis that we get on and do this podcast, you you, you get on that chair and you think you might have been interacting. Not with not ghosts? weekly. No, there's there's different incidences. I told you the incidences I've had. In that the last incident I had was I was hearing a noise from the attic, a bang, bang, bang coming from the attic. Mm-hmm. Then I got the ladder and I went up in the attic and I'm like, what the fuck is this noise? Mm-hmm. I'm like, is someone banging on the roof? So I go up in the attic and I walk in the attic and I hear the bang, bang right in front of me. And mm-hmm. I'm walking around the noise and it's like bang, bang, bang. I'm like, I don't see anything. I'm just hearing a banging noise. It's like, how do you explain that? Like, it was a, it, it was a pipe that got, that was uh, stretching out. No, the there's no pipe. There's no pipe. It's an attic. No pipe. I don't know, man. But I mean, yeah, ghosts like to get your attention. He's trying to, with a ghost is trying to get my attention. Like, give me attention, and that's. Whenever I hear anything, I don't, even, I don't, I know I'm by myself in the house. I hear something. I'm like, I don't care. So when, fuck it. That's it, son. That's maybe, good, though. maybe I could have heard that banging. I could have been like, it's probably the neighbor. I just, why do I hear it here? I don't know. Neighbor, neighbors banging around, whatever. Done. Gotcha. All right, buddy. All right. I think that does it, guys. Um, if you like what we're talking about, let us know if you um, are interested in the supernatural. You think I'm full of shit. You think Rick's full of shit. I'll leave a comment. Come and tell us about it. We, we would love to hear uh, your experiences. If you've ever seen, if you've ever been um, probed 
by an alien. Um, you know, definitely let us know that. And then, all right, Steve. So let, let me let me ask you this one last thing before we go. Okay, because this is okay. So, um, is this the condom question again. She's on birth control. Okay, she's um, you're on the sauce. You're wearing a condom. You've had a vasectomy, and you're having anal sex. Do you what? stay in or do you pull out? Mm, I don't know, bro. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I think I'd have it. I'll still probably pull out. But have you got a vasectomy? <laughs> Who me? Yeah. Fuck no, I'm not getting a vasectomy. No. Nah. Yeah, I'm scared to get it, bro. That's the thought. Ugh, this, the thought scares me. If you guys out there have gotten a vasectomy, let us know how it went. I'm curious to know. Yeah. That shit sounds sounds scary. Maybe once, if I ever do get married and and that whole kid situation is resolved, I I want. But like, bro, I went out to. I'm 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 going out with this lady right now. It's beautiful, gorgeous lady. She's uh she's 32 and she just throws it at me. She's like, you know. I want to have kids one day. I'm fucking sank in the bottom of my, in my seat or having lunch. I'm like, ah, fuck this. I'm like she wants chitlins. Well, and it makes sense. You know, she, she, she finished college. She's got a career. She's got her fucking things going on. She's got her own money and um, she's 32. So now, you know, so I don't know who knows. Maybe, maybe I, I might have, maybe I might, maybe I won't, but yeah, I'm not fucking up a sec to me. Not, not for now. It's not not in my plans. You know what I mean? Because I might have children. And plus, it does. What do you what, what do you do? You know anybody that's had one? What do they tell you that it fucks? Does it fuck with you or that it's it's fine? Um, I've had different opinions, man. I've had uh, everyone's been saying that it went pretty good. It just depends on uh, you know, what doctor you go to. So some guys is just like in and out, like. 30 minutes in and out and you're done. So it just depends. Damn. I think they make it, they've gotten really good at it. So. All right. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Yeah. We really appreciate you guys listening and we will talk to you guys next week for another one. Leave the comments. Like I said, we'll talk to you guys then. Take care. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>